The Center for Homeland Defense and Security at the Naval Postgraduate School focuses on empowering decision makers and leaders in responding to emergencies and potential threats. Everybody who goes through the center feels an incredible bond. They have that kind of shared rigor of the academic work. They have 18 months of interaction with each other, helping each other, getting through some pretty difficult times, and not just you know, through the, the academic work, obviously, but their professional lives and their personal lives. It's quite a commitment. The opportunity to work with professionals not only from around the country, but from a, a wide variety of disciplines, from those in law enforcement, federal government, state government, those in the legal discipline. There's a collection here of professionals that avail themselves to the, the topics of discussion in such a way that it, it, it really broadens the operational mindset of those who attend, as well as the, the strategic frame of reference that they have to work with. So it was absolutely beneficial, uh, both for me professionally and for my organization and, and the community we protect to come out here and invest time to study in the master's program. Well, St. Louis is a major metropolitan area. Regionally, we have about three million people that we protect. This extends well beyond the normal fire and EMS delivery that, that we give on a daily basis. We assume a lot of command and control responsibilities for the protection of life for major events. Festivals, parades, the All-Star Game, World Series, presidential visits, more recent events like Ferguson, Missouri, those all play into not only our city's security, but the region's security as a whole. And as a, a lead banner partner, uh, the St. Louis Fire Department has a responsibility to bring forth the most effective measures in providing competent protection to the city and region as a whole. I think the biggest concern for the city of New Orleans is obviously natural disasters. When we think about Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Rita and the disasters that both preceded that and came after that, but also vulnerabilities that are prevalent throughout the community, whether it's the Port of New Orleans um, or even the increasing crime rate. The emergency medical services for the city of New Orleans approached me about possibly becoming their in-house counsel, not only for EMS, but for all the public safety agencies for the city of New Orleans. But to do that, I would need the knowledge base in connection with the national security and emergency preparedness sphere. And I'm really using this opportunity to learn from all of the other public safety professionals in the class about uh, what I need to do to better serve the agencies back in New Orleans. As we were discussing some similar threads, some similar interests that we have in the public safety sphere, we were both interested in drone policies and how public safety can blend quality strategic guidelines while balancing the Fourth Amendment right to privacy issues that I think everybody in the country is, is struggling with to some extent. What I found very interesting is that so many of these communities actually have laws in place that allow unmanned aerial surveillance use by law enforcement agencies and these laws simply aren't being put into practice because law enforcement officers or public safety agencies are scared of unfairly or in violation of the Fourth Amendment intruding on citizens' privacy rights. And so what we have done is taken those concerns, taken the operational benefits, and taking the legal framework that's out there, and try to create a model policy that we believe works well to both balance the public safety aspect and also balance the privacy concerns. I think the, the most interesting thing about this is not only the policy recommendations, but being able to blend my skill set, which is largely strategic and operational, with her firm grasp of the, of the legal issues in play and, and some of the administrative and governance issues in play. We were able to look at it from two very unique perspectives, bring these two disciplines together and walk away with something that we believe would both be good for the operators, be good for the community and, and the public safety at large, as well as pass uh, some legal muster. I tend to look at things uh, from a purely legal perspective. And in working with one of my colleagues who is in the public safety sphere and the operational aspect of that, I was able to see the concerns and the benefits of um, using these unmanned aerial surveillance systems from a completely different perspective. Taking the legal framework completely out of it and just looking at the benefit that the public could get and how it could enhance public safety and sort of stepping away from my very myopic view of just technical application of the law and being more flexible in my approach. Um, and looking at how it could actually better help the public if we were more flexible in the law and allowed it to actually work in the way that it was supposed to work.